Hi folks, Doc here. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, dogs barking in the distance. The water in the pond is actually wet. Haven't seen this in a while. It's been a long, cold, nasty winter. <clears throat> a uh, topic came up on one of the uh, Facebook pages that I frequent last night. And uh, one of the fellas, and you'll forgive me for not remembering who at the moment, I definitely need another cup of coffee, brought up tethered kill switches. And suggested that, uh, you know, they're a good idea even for a uh, mud mower or an off-roader. You know, we, uh, we typically see them on speed machines, racers. Uh, in fact, uh, all the race sanctioning bodies require them. Uh, however, for the average DIY guy with a lawn tractor, um, a lot of people don't consider them. Or at least not until you have a mishap. Um, because of the way these things work and the fact that we tend to tear out the factory safety switches and seat switches and stuff like that, uh, if you get launched off your machine, it will keep going. And it'll keep going until it either strikes something or runs out of gas. Odds are pretty good it's going to strike something first. You uh, certainly don't want to damage your machine. And uh, you definitely don't want to damage a human being on the other end of that sucker. You never know. Crap happens, right? Write that down. So with the topic being brought up, and the fact that many of us tend to work on a fairly limited budget, I mean, sure enough, you could run out and buy one for 10, 15, 20 bucks. I bought one for my racer. I think it cost me, what, $15 locally? Uh, and in that particular case, I had no choice to, but to spend the money. You know, um, when you race, they're, they're not going to accept, you know, some kind of homebrew kit, even if it does work. However, for those of you that are just doing this on your own, I'm gonna show you today how you can build your own tethered kill switch uh, using common bits and pieces that you are likely to already have on hand, therefore costing you nothing, and uh, it could save you your machine or somebody's neck in the case of a crisis. So uh, let's have a look and see what we can whip together, okay? Today's test subject is going to be Mule. We're going to install a tethered kill switch. And the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, either locate or drill a half inch hole in your dashboard. In this particular case, I got kind of lucky. I'm going to try and get in here. It might be a little dark. Oh, it's very dark. But if you look very carefully, <clears throat> you should be able to just see to the left and to the right of that toggle switch that I've already got in there uh, a couple of holes that are already in the dash and I believe they're going to be the right size and the outside they're just covered by that plastic dash skin there with all the markings on it so all we're going to do is just uh, go ahead and basically cut the plastic uh, in your case you may need to drill a half inch hole because you're going to install one of these metal bat handle toggle switches. Now, if you're already using a toggle switch as your kill switch, you can go ahead and skip this step because we're going to reuse it here and it's not going to interfere with your normal kill switch operation. Okay, so I've taken a scrap length of wire. I think it's probably, uh, probably about 20 gauge. It's not particularly heavy and it doesn't have to be. Uh, I've put a couple of terminals on it and attached them to the switch so that when I install the switch in the dashboard I'm not struggling to reach in there and make the connections. But we're not going to install the switch yet. The key to the whole operation is what's next. Here I have an old paint can. What I want off it is the handle. Now what you need is a bit of stiff wire and uh, you could probably use one of the better metal coat hanger wires. Uh, we've got some coat hangers kicking around the house that are kind of flimsy and there's the odd one that's one of the nice thick stiff ones and you want some stiff wire for this the stiffer the better um, so we're just going to go ahead and cut a chunk out of this don't need the whole thing just a piece of it you can probably uh, 
probably hit up a paint store for an old can or if you know a painter and uh, just get yourself a piece of wire maybe six inches long and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend a u-shape in it we're going to make that u-shaped bend oh about a half inch long a half inch in diameter inside and what you want to do is make sure that when you've got that u-shaped bend in there it's going to fit around the threaded body of the toggle switch like so with your toggle switch in hand have a look through your parts pile find yourself a washer with an inside diameter that's going to fit over the barrel of the toggle switch like this it means something with a bit of a flange to it something that's going to uh, hold the wire in place on the toggle switch securely in the dashboard we're going to go ahead and install that now switch through the hole I'm going to slip the wire on, we'll worry about positioning afterwards washer on and the retaining nut go ahead and tighten that down making sure to get that piece of wire to stay vertical while we're doing it. Get it nice and tight, you don't want that wire going anywhere. Okay, so we've got the piece of wire held in securely in place with that washer. And with the switch in the on position, we're gonna go ahead and bend that wire over the washer we're going to bend it down until it passes the switch handle. There's a little bit of shadow here, I apologize for that, but you can see that I've got the wire bent down just past the switch handle. Now we're going to take a pair of cutters and just nip off the wire just a little bit past the switch handle. Now as you can see, the switch can still operate with your fingers regardless of anything that we do to it. Now, to wire this sucker up, you need two things. You need a good ground. In this particular case, I'm gonna use that terminal right there that I'm already using for a ground. Um, you can use just about any metal spot on the chassis that you can bolt to. Drill a hole if you need to. You need a ground. And you need to locate your kill wire. In my case, I know that it's this yellow wire on the switch right here. You can chase it back from your engine. They're pretty easy to spot. If you have any, you know, doubts about it, just uh, start your engine and uh, ground out what you think is your kill wire. If the engine quits, you found it. So, of the length of wire that I left attached to the switch, doesn't matter which pole you use it from, I'm just gonna take a length of wire that's gonna reach to my grounding point, in this case here, cut it. And I'm going to install a ring terminal on it, which really is the best way to go about doing it, honestly. You could bare a length of wire and just wrap it around the bolt and secure it down, but it's not really the best way of going about doing it. I'm just going to go ahead and crimp on this ring terminal. We're going to go ahead and install it on in our grounding point. I'm going to drop the nut where I can't reach it and spend the next 20 minutes looking for the darn thing. Over here you can see that I've uh, tied my new kill wire in to the existing kill wire with one of those tap and splice units. Uh, I tried filming it but you just couldn't see a blessed thing with my hands in the way. Now would be a good time to verify that the kill switch is working properly. There's three more items we need for this. We need some good 
strong string here. I've got some poly here. Very, very, very strong for its diameter. Uh, you don't want twine or sizzle or manila or anything like that. It's a little bit too weak. You want something strong. You could use uh, a light gauge rope. Um, you could even use some fine chain if you were so inclined. Uh, this stuff I like. You need another washer. And you need something to use as a clip. In this case, I'm going to use a small carabiner. You could use a carabiner, a chain repair link, um, you know, any kind of clip that you can clip to yourself or your clothing. So we're going to run off a couple of feet of string here. You don't want it too long because you don't want it catching on stuff all the time. And of course, if it's too short, you know, you might accidentally trip the kill while you're driving and that would make your life a little miserable too. So we're going to go ahead and tie this onto the carabiner. And of course, you want some good knots on there. You don't want it letting go. Which is kind of critical. You definitely don't want it letting go or there's just absolutely no point to having the kill. Because it won't work. So we're just going to run a couple of knots into this. And make sure it stays put. I'm going to do the same thing with the washer. I'm going to loop that through twice. Tie a couple of knots in it. This poly likes to fray. It might melt the ends later just to pretty it up. Okay, so we have your tether here. This end goes on the switch, this end goes on your belt loop, on your coat, uh, around your leg, whatever you like, just to fix to your body. And what we're going to do is we're going to slip the washer on over the switch and put the switch in the on position. Let's see what happens. Look at that, we've killed it. I'd call that a success. Well, that wraps up our do-it-yourself freebie tethered kill switch modification. I'd like to thank you once again for watching Sprockets Garage on YouTube and sharing and subscribing. I'd like to invite you to check out the new Sprockets Garage Facebook group, uh, not only for modified lawn tractors, stock stuff as well, go-karts, cars, tools, general mechanic stuff. If it's greasy goodness, we're in. And uh, be sure to feed your adhesive addiction by visiting Sulphur City Design to get all your stickers and t-shirts and hoodies and all that sort of goodness. Until next time, take care of yourself.